Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. This time we are going to be talking about the second World to Power book. This one is on Metal Gear. So this is kind of an interesting book. Uh, they took a lot of liberties with it, just really inventing a lot of stuff that wasn't really in the game, especially the names of the characters and everything. It does follow the game for the most part, with the exception of a few things. Uh, for some weird reason, they felt the need to add names to everyone, and they constantly remind you of the person's full name. But we'll we'll get into that one uh, later, a little bit later on. So the story opens with, uh, with Snake getting his mission. They give him the name Justin Haley in here. I'm not going to call him that throughout this thing because it's not his name. Even when I looked up some of the lore on it, it's, it has nothing to do with him. Uh, he is given, given some orders by Commander South. I don't know if that really was the guy, but I don't think it was. And he has to go take out the big bad guy who is Colonel Vermin Katafi. Which, yeah, th that was just invented for the book and doesn't have anything to do with the actual game at all. Anyway, we're told that Snake is going to be a is going to be the distraction that the compass that he's given is not a real communication device. So we're immediately told that you know Snake's being lied to by his commander, and he is basically being sent in to die. This would play out in future Metal Gear games, which made me kind of think that uh, the author had gotten notes on this. So he had some notes from Kojima that he was going to be writing off of. It's kind of cool to see that, um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange one, so I am pretty sure that they had notes on this. So just like in the first game, or in the game, he breaks into Outer Haven, uh, has to avoid a whole bunch of traps and everything, uh, gets all of his gear, which follows the game pretty closely, and has to save Dr. Petrovich, Petrovic, yeah, whatever, and his daughter Ellen. Along the way, he finds all of his comrades who've been kidnapped, which follows the game very closely. Most of them are given names for some odd reason, as well as pseudonyms, which I'll get into later. Uh, I was getting kind of annoyed by it, but it's, yeah. He eventually finds his way to, um, he eventually finds his way to where Metal Gear is, and just like the NES version, he doesn't fight Metal Gear, and he kind of fights the, the boss at the end and defeats him. And then the rest of the troops come in and we find out, or he finds out that this was all just kind of a ruse. It's a really interesting story, even if it's not really all that great, to be perfectly honest. If I was younger, it would have been a much better story, and I would have liked it a lot more. Okay, so, so the stupid names. Uh, I don't know why the author gave everyone a first and a last name, I'm really unsure why Big Boss became Vermin Katafi. I don't really understand that at all. Big Boss actually becomes the person that Snake communicates with on, on the radio. Sort of. He doesn't really even communicate with them. He just gets radio messages. Uh, that was kind of stupid. I don't think that it really added anything to the book. You didn't really need that in there. It was just really, really dumb. Some of the Resistance members that are mentioned in the game are just sort of gone, and it's it's very, it's very weird. It, it just kind of felt really strange going through this, where the author is constantly reminding you that, Sn that Solid, S Solid Snake is Justin Haley. Almost like he was trying to influence how the games were going to play out after this one. 
I, I really don't understand that. It was kind of dumb, and it was kind of really stupid. They should have just left it alone and kept calling him Snake or Solid Snake instead of constantly going, you know, one sentence, Solid Snake did this, and then jumping to the next one and saying, you know, Justin Haley, blah, 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 blah. I It got really annoying because they just kept going back and forth with it, like using one name and then using another name. And it just felt really weird. Even when he met uh, Gray Fox, he would do the same thing. You would get Gray Fox, then you would get the name that they gave to Gray Fox. And then when he met another guy who was, I guess, the brother of one of the the Resistance lady, it was really stupid. You're even given, like, three names for for the uh, the lady that you're talking to on the radio. You're given Big Boss, Jennifer, and Diana. And it was just really stupid. I wish they would have just picked one name and gone with it. It would have worked a lot better in this. Okay, so what, what did I like and dislike about this? Uh, I mean, you can already tell I didn't like the stupid names that they gave everybody. But what I did like is how the how the story kind of expands on the game at the time. At When this was written, we only had Metal Gear in the West. They had a few other games in, you know, in Japan, on the PC, that sort of thing. But we only really knew about the first Metal Gear. And then we got the, the weird sequel to it, which wasn't really a sequel and was kind of ignored. But this book kind of filled in a lot of the holes as to why Snake was doing what he was doing, what was going on, why he didn't have a lot of the stuff with him. And all of that really worked well. I thought that was kind of great. They explained why he was being sent in without any gear. Uh, he was. You get told why he's collecting all the different stuff. Even if some of the things that he gathers up aren't ever mentioned again or really aren't used. Like, I don't remember him using the grenade launcher at all during this. And there are some other things that I don't ever remember him, like, ever actually using. And the body armor kind of seemed a little bit pointless because he gets shot anyway and the bullet managed to get around some of the plates in the armor. But anyway, it's, it's, (laughs) it's fine. I do like that they worked in why he needs the rations like he needs the rations to get past the heat panels in this it's kind of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense what, how it, how that works but you get told that snake needs to get all the rations and he needs to eat all the rations to get through the heat panel room and you're told that he needs to eat all of this food in order to raise his body temperature up in order to survive long enough to turn off the heat panels Okay, I guess. <laughs> it seemed a little bizarre and a little stupid, but I had to think I have to think back to when I was 10, I would have been like, "Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense." I mean, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense in the video game how eating rations is going to refill his health after getting shot a few times, but so yeah, I, I guess I could believe that even though it was kind of dumb the way they explained it. I think the the radio communications were one thing that this book did not do very well. Because in the game you get like more of a back and forth. There are more people talking to you on the radio on the radio. Uh you have the radio from the very beginning, so you're constantly getting updates. It kind of makes more sense in the game why you're getting those because you're in theory getting some information that you need. In the book it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he gets this and somehow the person on the other end knows exactly what snake is looking at where he is not just in like a two-dimensional map but in three dimensions so it kind of feels like they've tapped into surveillance cameras that are watching him as well and it just it doesn't it's just not worked in very well and there's no back and forth between Snake and the person on the radio. It's just him listening to them and trying to decipher what they're talking about. 
And thankfully, Snake comments on how he like he thinks about why they know where he is and everything. So it's never really explained, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense how they know this stuff. I just have to chalk it up to being in a video game and then getting translated to a book so a, so a younger kid could watch it or read it. So what what are my final thoughts on this? Uh, I thought it was fun. It, it was a very fun book to read through. Uh, because now... I'm older, a lot older now than I probably should have been when I read the when I did read this. I I kind of see a lot of the things that don't make too much sense in the story, and I try to think back to when I was a kid and go, you know what, I wouldn't have cared about that when I was little, and I really wouldn't have. I think it's a very fun story. It does clear up a lot of things that were wrong with the with the game. There aren't as many <laughs> weird spelling errors with the localization of, of the first Metal Gear, so that's kind of nice. Overall, I, I think it's a, it's a fun book. So that's going to wrap things up, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.